Hello, this video is brought to you by the Streaming Advisor. Tailor your entertainment with streaming. And what we're looking at here is a TCL Roku powered TV. You see that in the corner, it says TCL Roku TV. What that means is that this is a TV built by TCL, which makes lots of great TVs, but it's running on the Roku operating system. Roku, if you're know, not familiar with it, is a company that makes operating systems for TVs that you usually find on little boxes or, or streaming sticks. But what they've done here is partnered with TCL to build out a system so that a app-based smart TV system is built completely into the TV from the ground up. How is that different than having something like a Roku box? Well, it's all in the settings and HDMI and things like that. For instance, when you go into the settings, there are lots of settings specific to Roku. The theme, all of this stuff, screensaver, those are all things to do with the Roku and its apps. But you can also adjust the TV settings. See? You can adjust the TV inputs. You can name them. You can select them. Change the audio. So these are all things that you would otherwise have to do with, say, a different controller. But with a Roku-powered TV, you have one controller that controls all of the features. And so that's really helpful. What you see up here is the HDMI ports. And this is very different from what you would usually experience. Usually with any kind of a streaming device, you would have one HDMI port that had a streaming device plugged into it, or maybe multiple streaming devices plugged in. But because the streaming option is built into the TV, you no longer have to worry about plugging it in, which leaves your HDMI ports free. In this case, you have three free HDMI ports, and you can plug in anything that you need to. They also make it very easy to figure it out. You don't have to remember what's on HDMI 1, for instance, because you can press the star button, and you can rename it. So let's say you have a Blu-ray player plugged in. You can say Blu-ray player is plugged into HDMI 1, and it will say that's the Blu-ray player. On HDMI 2, let's say you have a, let's see, a video game system. We've got an Xbox, so I'll say Xbox. It looks like an old Atari. It's kind of a fun little retro thing, but you see it says Xbox. So now if you say, hey, you know, Let's get the Blue Play Ray player going. Boom, you select it. Get the Xbox going. Boom, you select it. You can also create your own. So you see that there's some sort of prefab things, including VCR, and uh, I believe even uh, it has a LaserDisc player on it. For anybody who's still got a LaserDisc player, I'd like to get one just for the fun of it. But you can create your own name. So let's say you have something like a Amazon Fire TV. You just select it. And it looks like we had already experimented with it. So let me clear it out. And let's say it's an Apple TV. All you have to do is go in, write Apple TV, We'll just leave it at Apple, save a little time, and then you select whatever you think is the best version of what's on here. We might just select this. This is sort of a Roku-ish looking thing, but now it says Apple. So now we know that this is the Blu-ray player, this is the Xbox, this is the Apple TV, and we don't have to think. Which one is HDMI 1? Which one is HDMI 2? It also has a section for AV ports. That's sort of what you call the RCA port, but in this case... Whatever you have plugged into that, you can do the same thing. Oh, well, there's the LaserDisc player. And so it's very easy once you've got things set up to just launch into whatever it is that you want because it's up here with all of the apps. If you want to go into Hulu, Hulu's right here, but your Xbox is also right here also. You can even decide where you want it. You can put your video game system down towards the bottom if you want to. Then you go to the home, and Xbox is down here. 
So that's just a really, really cool thing. And you can't do that with a normal Roku. A normal Roku, all you have is the apps. So speaking of apps, Roku, if you're not familiar with it, has about 7,000 plus apps available. And it keeps everything in this area called the streaming channels. Streaming channels has an app store that's broken down by everything from what's new and exciting and popular to the genres. And it has a lot of genres, as you say. TV Everywhere apps are cool because what they do is if you have a pay TV subscription, and this includes cable and even a lot of the streaming services, things like Sling TV or Direct TV Now or Fubo TV. You can add the TV Everywhere apps that go with them and then access them. You just have to sign in, but those give you a lot of really cool features. The TV does feature some games. They're not the most advanced games, but they're fun. They're kind of time killers, things like the maze and yeah, it has a, a snake game, things like that. Nothing real complicated. It's not – you're not going to be like, hey, I, why would I even need a PlayStation when I've got all these games for the Roku? But they're fun to mess around with now and then. Good for a rainy day. But you see, there are numerous, numerous categories and lots and lots of channels. If you look in the right-hand menu, for instance, fitness, there's 181 fitness channels, 259 food channels. Well, I – Maybe we know the, the problem with the weight gain here in the U.S., huh? But in general, this gives you an idea of just what you've got from an app selection. Roku's app selection is far greater than what you find on, say, like a TV that's just called a smart TV. You see them all the time for sale, and you know it's a smart TV with TV apps, but it doesn't necessarily mean you've got the latest and greatest, much less – a big selection. Now, speaking of TVs, when you see them at the store, one of the reasons I chose TCL is you find TCL everywhere. TCL can be found at Walmart, Best Buy, lots of other big box stores, and it's almost always inexpensive. But what I wanted you to understand in this review is that this doesn't mean that it's not a good TV. It's 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 inexpensive, but it isn't cheap. And it's got a great picture. This here is a 4K TV, and you, you know, and I bought it for somewhere around $250, $260. I mean, that's that's the the price. It's often on sale, and you know, so if you see it on a Black Friday deal or something like that, you can feel confident that you're getting something that's really worth your time. So, speaking of apps, we showed you the App Store. I need to tell you something really great about the apps on a TV like this. TCL TVs with Roku built in are always going to have the latest apps for whatever it is that you want. And while we're doing apps, let's go ahead and move the Xbox back up to the top. All right. So, but you're always going to have the latest apps for your system. For instance, if you jump into Netflix, you'll see that at least as of the recording of this video, you've got the latest Netflix app. This is, you know, a more recent update and it's completely every feature that Netflix wants out there for its customers are available on the app on this TV. Another app that's been recently updated that you can take a look at is Plex. The latest update for Plex, if you've seen it, has a vertical menu here on the left, and that's what you get. If you're unfamiliar with Plex, it's a media server program that allows you to access any sort of digital media you've got, from movies, TV shows, and music, to some stuff that they've got piped in, like a news feature and a podcast player. It's a great app that allows you to control what you're watching, when you're watching it, record and play things back, it's worth checking out. Now, that's a really important feature though. As I've seen a lot of smart TVs, you see them and they say they have apps and all of a sudden maybe you read, uh-oh, something and such TV is going to drop support for YouTube or it's going to drop support for something else. 
That's not going to happen on this because Roku, as long as Roku exists as a company, is going to keep on updating their stuff. Now let's show you a really cool feature about Roku, which is its automatic search or its universal search. Roku has a search that searches for through tons and tons of apps. I don't know just how many it does, but it is lots and lots of them. Of course, they call them streaming channels. But it's funny how many things are out there that maybe you don't remember or you don't you don't know where in the world you would find it. Like it's not on Netflix, it's not on Hulu. So you say, well, I mean, you know, what about that zoo movie? I don't even know if there is a zoo movie, but let's just see if there's a zoo movie. Zoo. The zoo. Okay. Look at that. The zoo. What's this? That's available on four different platforms. Let's see what the zoo is, 2017 to present. Well, there you go. You can buy it or watch it for free on Animal Planet. You see how that works? If you take a if you take a selection of anything in general, this is called the zoo. It's on Vimeo. Zootopia. It's available for rent. You see what it see how it works? It shows you every instance of something in general if it's available. And sometimes you're going to rediscover something that you didn't know. I mean, did you know that there was something called, you know, that there was a red box streaming app? Maybe not. I found lots of things on just the strangest little apps that I didn't even know existed and been able to watch them. And it's really cool. The Roku TV also updates. It, it will, you can set it to update automatically, but you will never have to worry about keeping yourself up to date. It has a strong Wi-Fi signal, but when you get past everything else, it's still a, an actual television, and that's really cool. It has an antenna. You can't run an antenna through a Roku, but with a Roku TV, you can set up and view things over the air. There's a lot of over-the-air TV channels that you can get a hold of by just hooking up an antenna and doing a simple scan. Roku walks you through that scan, and you'll, you'll see not, not everything comes in perfectly. That's all according to the weather and where things are. But Roku allows you to run your TV antenna through your TV. And if you want, all you have to do is scan the channels, and that's it. It'll take you through, you know, it says, you know, scan, for instance, it'll say, we'll show you. Start finding channels. It'll ask you, do you want to connect like a VCR? If you've still got one, you can say so. We'll just go through that. And then it scans the channels. Not only that, it can even scan for cable channels. So if you plug in a cable thing, it will scan for your cable channels too. So it's not just for antennas. Let's say you have cable, just like the rest of these things. You can tell it that you want to change the input. So if it isn't actually an antenna that you've got, you can rename it to cable TV. Now, in summation, like we said, they have a way to set things up so that it's easy to find other things that you've got plugged into the TV. You have a way to integrate antennas and cable TV, which is excellent. You can access all of the settings for the TV through the main Roku menu. And you have an excellent app store and search feature. This is Roku TV. If you are interested in learning more, we've got plenty of information about Roku on the Streaming Advisor. And I'm going to put a link down at the bottom of this video where you can order one if you choose to. And check it out. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting and helpful, please subscribe. Share this with your friends so that they can learn about all of the fun stuff going on in streaming too. And as always, I'm Ryan Downey, the Streaming Advisor. Stream on, my friends.